Hi, and thanks for joining me. This is Regina with Morel Fiber, and this tutorial is for the Morel Mushroom Secret Pouch. But before we get started on that, I wanted to show you what I like to use these mushroom pouches for, which is to attach to my Pixie Pocket Belts. And these Pixie Pocket Belts, um, they're free form. I make them totally different each time, but they are these crocheted belts with um, these added pouches and pockets. There's a drawstring pocket I just showed. This is what we're making today, which is the Morel Mushroom Secret Pouch. Um, it does have a hollow stem on the inside for stashing your goodies. And the cap slides down over the top and it's mounted on that chain loop, which I put at the front of my skirt and it is detachable. Here's the circular pocket on the other side. It buttons up using this little lace detail. And as I mentioned, I do make these skirts differently every time. Um, this one's got a lot of scrap lace and different samples of lace that I crocheted personally, as well as some vintage lace that I thrifted. So I just wanted to give you a quick tour of the Pixie Belt. Um, this Pixie Belt tutorial is available on my blog and I'm gonna link every tutorial mentioned in this video at the bottom. Okay, so to start the stem for the Morel Mushroom Secret Pouch, I'm going to take my number four yarn and my 3.75 hook and make a magic ring. So I'm going to wrap this yarn around my fingers and draw up a loop. And then chain. And I do have a magic ring video. It's a really quick tutorial on my YouTube channel if you're not familiar with the magic ring. So now that I have that magic ring worked out, I'm going to start my first round of the stem with six single crochet into that magic ring and I'm just working right under that loose yarn. Making six single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to tighten my ring by pulling the yarn closed, pulling this yarn tail, and closing that up. And for this mushroom stem, we're going to join with a slip stitch, at least at first. So I've got a slip stitch in my first round of six single crochet. It's a really small loop. So what we're going to do is chain one, and work a single crochet into that same stitch, and then work another single crochet into that same stitch as the join. So we're going to begin a round of increases where we work two single crochet in every single crochet of the round below. So we're going to end up with 12 single crochet stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. We're going to join with a slip stitch, but we're going to actually join in the back loop only because the next round works the back loop only. Or I'm sorry, no, it works the front loop only. I'm not looking at my pattern right now, sorry. I'm recording with my phone and my pattern is on my phone. Okay, so front loop only for the next round. 
And if you wanted to make this circle um, bigger, so if you want to fit bigger things inside this pouch, you could go ahead and add another round of increases. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that. So in the pattern, it says you can repeat round two to get a bigger stem size, which you can, which you can go around and do another two crochet in each crochet so that you would end up with 24 single crochet total. So you'd be increasing in every stitch again. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and do that. You could also follow the typical formula for circular crochet, which is you would add the same number every round. So last round we added six stitches. This round we're actually going to add 12, not six. Since this is free form, it doesn't matter too much. We'll just decrease it more later if it's too big. And I am doing this little tutorial. Um, somebody on my YouTube channel requested it and it really stuck in my head. And I thought, man, I really would like to do that because the morel mushroom tutorial on my blog is very free form and it leaves a lot of room for doing different stitches and making it look really earthy and knobbly and natural, just like a regular, like a real morel would look. So I wanted to demonstrate a little bit more how I achieved that look, but right now, so we have, we should have 24 at the end of this round. So one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-nine, 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 forty-two, forty-three, forty-four, forty-five, forty-six, forty-seven, forty-eight, forty-n
to really cement that height change visually. So since we have that taller part, I want to contrast it with a shorter part. Maybe even throw a slip stitch in there for zero height. And then you know what? I'm actually going to go back up to half double immediately after that and do two half double in the next front loop. So now I've got this wavy shape happening with the differing heights. And since I am working in a circle, I don't want this foot to be totally trapped downward. So I am adding some increases and kind of avoiding too many decreases because I want this to be able to flare out a little bit. So it needs those extra increases to have the circumference to do that. Freeform is random, but it does take a little bit of understanding of the geometry of crochet. And it's also a great way to learn the geometry of crochet because you can't really make a mistake. So even if I just decreased the rest of the way around, say I'm going to add a single crochet two together there, and then like a slip stitch, and then like another single crochet two together. So decreasing, so it's just pulling this shape inward a bit because it doesn't have the circumference but that still looks cool and like a real knobbly wobbly mushroom. So not wrong, just different. I'm very much in the Bob Ross school of art tutorials. So I don't, you know, like to make mistakes. <laughs> I love to make mistakes, but I don't think that they're a bad thing. I think they're just a learning process. So freeform is really uh, good for abandoning the desire to be perfect <laughs> and to just go with the flow. Okay, so I've got some more height changes going. I'm going to go ahead and add a cluster, a small one, just like a two double crochet cluster. Whoops. So to do that, I've got one double crochet with the last loop left on the hook. And then I'm going to do another double crochet with the last loop left on the hook. And then yarn over and draw through. There we go. And get this height back down to single crochet by going double. single and single. I haven't really been keeping count of my stitches. Um, just going by visually, I can tell that I'm pretty much done with this round. That's my slip stitch join from before. So I've got all of my stitches completed and they've all been in that front loop. So I'm going to turn this over and you can see the ridge of remaining back loops that are available. So this, is the bottom end of the stem. This is our foot. So it just forms kind of a rough edge that looks like the foot of a mushroom. Once you yank it out of the dirt, little edge there. And now, and we're going to continue building height by working around the stem. So to continue up the stem, we're going to actually switch from working joined rounds to continuous rounds. Um, I just like to work continuously up the stem so that there's no seam and also because I'm not going to be increasing or decreasing much. So I don't really need to keep that good of track. 
and we've been working in the uh, front loop only so we're going to continue by working in these back loop only so we're actually working this row twice this round twice once in the front loops and then once in the back loop to continue on so we're just going to go ahead and work our first single crochet in that first back loop single crochet And to make things simple, I'm just going to single crochet in every stitch of this round. Four, so that's 24 stitches. I'm just going to go once around just to kind of reset here. Five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, try not to bump this camera too much, it's not the sturdiest camera stand in the world. <clears throat> what was I on? 20? 20. 21. 22. 23. Okay, 23 is good enough. So now I have this bit of a spiral thing going on where it kind of crosses over and you kind of have to leapfrog into the next stitch to get the rest of your stem rounds going, which is fine. Just go ahead and work over that part to get your next stitch of the next round. So far, I have my first round of the actual stem. We're going to continue and work both loops for all the rest of the rounds, both loops, front and back loop only. You could do I mean, you could do front and back loop only, front or back loop only, if you wanted it to be a part of your textural freeform for the stem. I like to keep my hook inserted into both because this is a pouch and you're going to want the sturdiness of it being worked into both loops on most of the body because you don't want it getting too stretched out by the things that you're going to put in your pouch. So that's my reasoning, but again, it's freeform, and if you would like a textural edition of working only one loop, that's fine. So beginning with the remaining rounds, I'm going to work about 13, I'm going to try to work about 13 rounds for this stem. But I do want it to decrease just a bit at the bottom because this is a pretty wide stem and I like my mushrooms to be just a little bit smaller. So I just did a half double crochet two together. I'm going to go to a double crochet to get a height change in. I'm going to go straight back down in the next stitch to a single crochet. So that sudden change in height from double to single gives it just a little bit of a, n a nub or a a bump there and that helps with the textural portion of creating this little mushroom. So I worked a half double. I'm going to decrease again with another half double two together. I like the way that half double two togethers look. So I'm choosing to do my increases or I'm sorry my decreases in that stitch. Go back to 
single crochet for a couple stitches. Now I've decreased by two stitches, so I have 22 stitches remaining. It's not really important how many stitches you have up the stem as long as the size is what you want it to be for whatever you would like to put in it. I'm probably going to go back down to around 12 to 15 stitches, so I'm going to do another decrease. Some more height changes, so let's do like a half double and then a double. And then a single. And then a double. And then a single. And I'm not planning this really, I'm just kind of letting my brain throw up random stitch heights and strategies. Um, the only strategy I have is really I'm just doing decreases occasionally because I know that I want that stem to be smaller. And I can tell from where I'm at based on the foot here where I, this foot kind of separates and where I crossed over, I can tell I'm almost back to the round, begin, the beginning of the round. So that's going to be like this stitch is the beginning of the round. So I'm going to finish this round off with another half double two together so I did about four or five decreases leaving me with about 19 18 19 to 20 stitches somewhere in, around there And I'm going to work my next round with a few more decreases to really reduce in a short amount of time how big this is. It's kind of weird trying to describe the geometry of crochet, but I'm going to work some more decreases so that it's going to kind of abruptly be bulbous outward, you know, like mushrooms are. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and work several half double crochet two together decreases at the beginning of the round. And normally I would sort of space them out. But this is free form, and it might be kind of fun to have the decreases be really unbalanced. And so it would give this shape kind of a weird, natural, oddball sort of look. So I just did, okay, here's my fourth half double two together in a row. So that's four decreases in a row. I've got a wonky bend in my stem from where those decreases were suddenly concentrated. Whoops. <laughs> and I've reduced my round by about four stitches. So that's about how big I want the rest of this piece to be. about 15 stitches. Maybe I'll just do just a little bit smaller. We'll throw another decreases and another decrease in there. And since we're doing a half double for decreases, oh, dang it. I'm sorry. I gotta figure out a different tripod here soon. So since I'm on half doubles, I'm going to go ahead and do some textural height changes with some double crochets, but I don't want to increase my stitches. So I'm going to do a cluster where I leave all the last loops on the hook and then draw through all of them at once. 
and it leaves a little bobble. Go back down to half double and it emphasizes that bo bobble even more. So this was a cluster stitch and I went back down to a half double, then a single, another single. Where am I at on my round? I am getting close to the end. Here's another single, single, single. I'm just making it easy on myself at this point. <laughs> Okay, and that about completes that round. So we have that concentrated portion of half double crochet two together. So that makes this weird sort of lean. We have our cool double crochet bump. And we're back down to a fairly small pouch size, which is about where I want it. I want to go over that cluster again because that's a really fun textural stitch. So I'm going to keep going. Remember, we're going in the round, so we're not joining at the end of each round. We're just going forward and forward and forward. So I'm going to do a couple more half doubles, maybe a single, maybe another half double. So for the double crochet clusters, you're working three double crochets at the last loop on the hook. So you yarn over and insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and draw up a loop, yarn over and draw through two loops. Now to complete a normal half double, you would yarn over and draw through those last two loops. This is a half double with the last loop left on the hook. So it's exactly what it says it is. We're leaving that last loop on the hook and we're going to do two more doubles with the last loop left on the hook. So draw through two loops. There's one more. Yarn over, draw up a loop, draw through two loops. So we have three double crochets with the last loop on the hook and then there's also this loop left over from the previous stitch. We're just going to yarn over and draw through all the loops on the hook. And we've got a cluster. And again, to emphasize that cluster in a row of solid stitching, you could decrease the height of the stitch right after it, and it helps it kind of crouch down into this bubbly, knobbly shape. Continuing on, we're just gonna do some more easy stitches, kind of. Lazily changing height every so often. And returning to the starting point for the rounds. So, so far we have a very interesting looking mushroom stem and it's definitely like a morel because they're very just goofy looking. I don't know. They just look not nearly as delicious as they taste. <laughs> so there's our basic base of the morel with its little foot and it's knobbly base. And I think from this point onward, I'm just going to mostly do single crochet for the rest of the stem. A lot of the stem portion gets covered by the cap. So, you know, I'm just going to, for speed's sake, now that I've demonstrated some of the more freeform textural strategies, I'm just going to finish it off with the rows of single crochet and then I'll show you how to do the uh, chain loop for this stem. So I am finishing off the last few rounds of the stem for my mushroom cap or my mushroom pouch 
And I've done about 13 rounds. The first few that I got on video were much more knobbly. Um, I did do a few like little bumps and things at the side, but um, now that we're getting to the point where the cap is going to cover it a bit more, I just leave it a little bit more plain, especially because I'm trying to speed things along for the video. So I'm just working in the round continuously and getting just a little bit more length on this with just single crochet stitching. And whenever I feel like I have done enough stem, I'll finish off my round. approximately. Here's my stem. I will slip stitch of like one or two stitches forward and then start. We're gonna go right on into attaching the chain loop that the mushroom pouch is gonna hang from. So We'll chain a number. I usually like to do 100 to 150, kind of depending on the yarn and my gauge and who it's for. But just long enough to slip. I like to do long enough to slip around the neck, so big enough to go around the head. This one will be attached to one of my pixie belts, but I usually leave them freestanding. I just loop the chain loops to the pixie belt and then it can be removed and worn around the neck as well, or put on a favorite backpack or whatever adventure gear you fancy. I have no idea, I'm not counting right now because I'm talking, but I'm just going to go by length. Chaining the chain loop for this guy. I do have a tutorial for the um, little red capped Amanita pouches that I make and those are cute how they have like a little veil around the mid stem that's worked a little kind of similarly to the foot on this guy the tutorial video for that one is much older so um probably I still had a lot of learning left to do I still have a lot of learning left to do. Uh, I am trying to do more of these little real-time tutorial videos, um, both so that I'm not going too fast and also I just have a chance to kind of chit-chat and share little tips and tricks, which I don't really have time for that when I pre-record. These non-scripted ones are a little rambly, but I don't know. It's not the worst thing, I guess. <laughs> All right. I think I have this length long enough. Yes, it's quite long. So now that I have my chain length figured out, I'm going to go around to the opposite side of the stem and attach the other side of that chain loop by inserting my hook, doing a slip stitch there, and then maybe one or two more slip stitches just to secure everything. 
And there's the stem of the pouch. We've got this yarn still in there. We'll weave that in our loop and our little. There we go. So we'll cut the yarn and tie off. Up the yarn, and we'll weave in our ends on this piece. And now we are ready to make our cap. So, for the cap of the morel mushroom, I'm using this old chenille yarn I had from some D stash. Um, <laughs> But I doubled it up because it wasn't quite thick enough on its own. So I have these two strands of this brown chenille yarn. I'm going to start the cap portion. So the cap is separate from the stem. It just slides down over the chain when, when we're done with it. So we're going to start a totally new piece here by doing another magic ring. And then... Gonna single crochet six stitches into this magic ring, hopefully. Okay, so one. Two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to pull the magic ring closed, but not too tight because we need to get the chain loop through the top of the cap later. So I'm just going to kind of loosely close it, work those stitches out so that there's still a bit of a gap there. And working continuously in the round, I'm not going to slip stitch and chain. I'm just going to keep working. The next round, we're going to add one increase every other stitch. And the directions say to use mixed stitches. So again, like the stem, we're going to vary the height of the stitches. Um, maybe not add as many of the bobbles and like really gnarly bits because this cap portion is going to be covered by gnarly stitching anyway. But to make it look a bit more weird, you can definitely change your stitch styles, but you are going to want to add an increase every other stitch. So the first stitch I'm going to do single crochet. The next stitch I need an increase. So I'm going to do single crochet and a double crochet or a half double I'm sorry half double so that's one two three I'm going to do another half double four so that was one stitch so the next stitch I need an increase so that was four this is five and six And the next stitch stands on its own seven the next stitch is an increase eight and nine so we started with six stitches and we added three increases on the next round so we now have nine stitches and we're going to add three more increases on the next round by working them every third stitch. So one, two, 
to, this is the third stitch, so it gets an increase, three and four. five, six, we'll do seven and eight as double crochets, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then this is 11 and 12. So I'm going to do half double and single in the same stitch. And then we've added three more stitches. So we now have 12 stitches total. So the cap is coming out. It's like a gradual increase into a cone because we're not adding the same amount of stitches every round that we started with, we're getting a disproportionate shape. So we're instead of being a flat circle, it's coming out a cone, which is what we want. So the next round, we're going to work the same kind of pattern instead of the third stitch getting the increase. Now the fourth stitch is going to get the increase. So one, two and again i'm still working mixed stitches three and this is four so it's going to get an increase i'm going to go ahead and do a double and a half double in the same stitch for that increase start my counting over again one two three and this is the fourth stitch, so it gets an increase, four and five. If mixing up your stitches and counting out these increases is a little difficult, you can always go back to like just pick a pattern to stick with. So like I'm increasing on the fourth stitch in this row so I could go like okay my first stitch is single my second stitch is double my third stitch is or my second stitch is half double my third stitch is double and then on my fourth stitch I'm going to do a double and a half double and then just do that the whole row and you still have mixed stitches but you're getting your increases in where they should be but it's free form um, as long as you're increasing gradually and mixing up your stitches just keep going like that to form your cap until you have as much height on your cap as you like <laughs> it's not big enough yet Okay, so I've worked a few more rounds on the cap. Once you get a good cone shape going, you can be a little looser with the increases and decreases. You can kind of make the cap flare out a bit more if you like by doing a few more increases per round, or you can do some decreases if you want your cap kind of cupped inward at the bottom. That's what I'm doing. It's just like one or two little decreases along what's going to end up being the bottom part of my cap. I'm about out of my little chenille scrap. I'm going to work single crochet two together. couple half doubles. Varying your height without varying your increases or decreases will also 
kind of naturally cause the shape of your mushroom to be a little bit wonky and go inward and outward a bit more. Wonky is really the best word I can use to describe this little project. It's just fun and earthy and I love doing the textural um, features and they represent something I really love, which is mushroom hunting, hiking in nature, and finding these crazy alien looking little mushrooms and taking pictures of them and if they're morels, picking them and eating them because they are so good. Okay. Closing in on the last part of this cap now. It's looking pretty good. Check my size. Yeah, that's going to fit over that really nicely now. I'm probably going to do just a few more stitches. Okay. Do some half doubles. about at the end. Finish it up with some single crochet and some slip stitching. Not too many slip stitches because I want to keep the edge pliable because of the texture we're going to add on here in just a minute. So I'm going to pull that yarn through now that I'm done with that. And there's our plain cap. I'm going to stretch it out a bit to make it easier to work with in this next step. And get my contrasting white yarn, which is another scrap chenille. It's different than the cap yarn a little bit. It's still just kind of a white, white and brown, kind of like the naturally occurring color. I like to make really crazy colorful mushroom pouches too, but I don't know, something about designing it after the natural looking mushrooms really appeals to me. Okay, so next part is the um, texture on the cap. So the texture on the cap is really the most free for me of all the, the steps of this because it really is just stick your hook anywhere and stitch anywhere. So <laughs> it's kind of weird and lumpy, but it's supposed to look that way. And I think it looks really, um, it really complements the way that morel mushrooms really do look with that weird zigzaggy craggy um, surface on their caps. So to get that we're just going to attach our yarn at the bottom of the cap on the surface. So we're working entirely in the surface of the cap. So I'm going to chain one just to start and what I'm going to try and do is work up to the tip of the cap and then zigzag back down and then zigzag back up all the way around and the stitches I'm working are going to be like singles and again mixed stitches worked into the surface so my hook is going to come out or be inserted on top and come out on top just kind of working around the body of the stitches that are in rows and I'm mostly going to stick to half double and single and slip. And I'm kind of folding this piece and just cramming my hook into the body of the stitches. And it's making this raised bit. 
of stitches that's going to go up and down the cap. But we don't want it to be straight. We want it to kind of zigzag back and forth. So I'm going to turn the cap a little bit and move my line of stitching over. Maybe I'll do a half double here to kind of help that happen. And then zigzag back, move my line of stitching over again, kind of back over here. Whoops. Pick up an extra strand. Maybe half double back over here. Single back here. And that way it moves back and forth just a little bit and actually need it to move back and forth just a little bit more than that. So I'm going to get even crazier. So now we're at, here's our top of the cap here, their initial ring. So moving right along, I'm going to scooch my stitches, my line of stitching over and work back down toward the brim of the cap. And I do want this white part to really connect and not leave a lot of brown part in between. That's going to help it look realistic and natural because the craggy texture really covers most of the cap in a natural morel. So wiggling back and forth here and placing my stitches really pretty randomly. And what's funny about crocheting these is that I have to remind myself to be random. <laughs> it's actually harder work for my brain than to just go in a straight line. And I think I'm just so used to straightforward stitching that Doing freeform like this is kind of harder, which is <laughs> good. If you challenge your brain every day, then your brain gets stronger. And actually, I've read studies that say it makes you happier if you challenge your brain with new things all the time. Okay, so I'm working back up toward the tip of the cap now. Again, I'm keeping my lines of stitching pretty close together. Looks good. Looks very textural. I'm going to actually take this line and cross it over this line real quick by stitching into it for a couple of stitches. Just so things are nice and mixed up. Returning to the tip of the cap. So I'm going to move my line of stitching over again. There's the tip moving over so I can go back down. Cap of the mushroom. There's a half double. Maybe I'll work a slip. It's getting pretty tight, so I'm kind of wrestling with it. I might want to pause and loosen my gauge just a little bit, loosen my tension. Take a look at what I've done. Looks great. So hopefully that's a much better illustration than just the pictures on the free written blog tutorial, which I'll link that tutorial in the description below. 
Um, I'll also link the Amanita tutorial. And, um, whoops, my camera. And I hope you enjoyed this little project. It's kind of half a pattern and half free form. Um, there's some of my favorite little gifts to make as well, these little mushroom pouches. And they work really great at craft fair booths. Oh my God, they're just, they, I always sell out of them when I do vending. So they're great for that as well. And they're just the cutest little, most fun project in my opinion and especially because you can put like your chapstick and lighters and money and stuff in it i love useful stuff so i'm gonna go ahead and finish this cap off off camera and then we'll put it all together so i'm just finishing up weaving in my ends here on the stem and cap. I finished up all the crazy textural rows on my cap. I cut all my uh, yarn ends and wove them all in. And now that I'm done doing that on both the stem and the cap, I'm just gonna pop cap onto the stem and I do that I take my hook I insert it through the top that magic circle we left kind of loose so that the hook comes out the bottom and I'm gonna grab the loop and just use my hook to pull that chain loop from the stem through the top of the mushroom cap and then when you pull it down it covers the empty pouch there with that cap. So you have a little mushroom guy and you can pull the cap up and put stuff in the stem there. It's like perfect size for chapstick, lighters. Um, some my friends like to use them to hold their vapes. Um, kind of fits a hook. Uh, not really. <laughs> okay, not a hook, but you know, it's a um, cute little fun accessory and they make, like I said, they make really great gifts. I'm going to link the other mushroom pattern down below and I hope that I get to see your little mushies. Um, tag me on Instagram and uh, check out my other business links too if you get a chance and do not forget to like and subscribe this video. Thank you.